Hello everyone and welcome to the back room. In this video I'm exploring two flavors of CPM for the Atari 8-bit computers, Indus GT and Fujinet, the venerable but difficult and the super modern and easy. I'll show you the hardware and software necessary for both setups, how to boot CPM on each and what you can expect to do when you have CPM up and running. Why would we want to do this? Well, you've probably heard it all before, but CPM was the leading small systems operating system for several years before the advent of MS-DOS, which means there's a huge amount of software available to run under it. And if, like me, you like messing about with old computers, it's super fun to watch WordStar, DBase2, or Turbo Pascal come up on an Atari 8-bit. Of course, truth be told, CPM isn't actually running on the Atari, but rather it's running on a real or emulated Z80 attached to the Atari and accessed via a terminal emulator, such as Ice-T, Bobterm, or VT850. Ideally, output will be 80 columns, either hard or software generated, and I'll look at several of these options. The easiest way to get started with CPM is undoubtedly with Fujinet. This is a little device that plugs into the SIO port of an Atari 8-bit and emulates a number of peripherals such as the disk drive, printer and modem. It can also connect to your Wi-Fi where it will enable your Atari to download and boot software directly from the internet. Fujinet is based around an ESP32 microcontroller and an onboard microSD card. And somewhere along the development line, someone had the very good idea of including a build of Run CPM, a Z80 stroke CPM emulator that runs on the ESP32. By issuing the simple command at CPM from a terminal window, Run CPM boots and your Atari is running a super fast and stable version of CPM 2.2. Indeed, it runs far faster than CPM on a real Z80 CPU. It's simple to use, there's no messing around trying to transfer CPM software from different file systems on real media. Applications are stored in folders on the Fujinet's SD card, which acts as logical floppy drives, and each folder can be further subdivided into user areas 0 to 15, with 0 being the default. So you might, for example, have WordStar in a folder called 1 inside a parent folder called A, which will simply appear as drive A1 at the CPM console. So make a folder, pull whatever software you want into it and access that folder as a drive from within CPM. The CPM distribution itself is stored on the SD card as a folder called 0 within another folder called A. To boot Fujinet CPM, boot your Fujinet as usual, access one of the available servers over Wi-Fi such as the Arata server, open the comms folder and select Ice-T, load it and then press Option. Once Ice-T has booted, check the board rate from the settings menu, 19.2 works fine.
and then scroll along to the terminal menu and press return. At the terminal window, type AT CPM and press return. Run CPM will boot and you'll be at the A0 prompt in an 80 column window onto a CPM world. And at this point, let's just take a moment to heap plaudits onto the minor miracle that is the truly fantastic Ice T and its 80 column display. Despite being software generated, this display is fast, stable, highly readable, and very nearly as good as a hardware solution. With a drive prompt, you can issue a dir command to see what's on the logged disk. A0 has a full complement of CPM 2.2 transients and utilities, including Microsoft Basic, DDT, ASM, etc. I'll talk more about getting some famous CPM applications up and running, but first, let's look at some other ways to boot the FujiNet system. Pitch somewhere between software and hardware, the DT8080 column terminal cartridge by Klaus B provides a convenient way by which you can access CPM in 80 columns. My version was downloaded from a link on Atari Age and burned to an ancient Atari Max 1 megabyte flash cart. To boot the system, install FujiNet in the usual way. Insert your DT80 cart and switch on your Atari. FujiNet boots as normal and then a DT80 takes control and boots directly into CPM. DT80 is fast and produces a font that is not dissimilar to Ice T. Whereas Ice T is pretty much VT100 compatible and will therefore work perfectly with, for example, WordStar. I've yet to discover what DT80 is actually emulating in terms of a terminal type and is therefore largely useless for any software which expects to manipulate the screen. Having said that, it could be entirely my fault. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. For the ultimate CPM experience, a hardware generated 80 column display is the way to go. So I fished out my venerable XCP80 and connected it to a Kaga green screen monitor, which copes well with the XCP's notorious overscan. Several terminal programs support the XCP and here you can see the system booting Curtis Lasers VT850. This works well and is VT100 compatible, but unfortunately it's limited to 2400 board which produces noticeably slow screen updates. If you use a board rate that is any faster, the screen becomes garbled and uh, the system drops characters.
The well-known Bob Term has a driver for XEP and, like all of Bob Poff's output, is utterly reliable and stable and has a user interface which is thoughtful, intuitive and a joy to use. Despite applying the patch driver from Matty Nisselroy's webpage, I wasn't able to push Bob Term's board rate beyond 4800 before it began to drop characters and also mess up the screen output. What's more, Bob Term emulates the VT52 terminal and despite setting the terminal type within WordStar to Heathkit H19, screen output is significantly garbled. Ideally, what's needed is a VT100 compatible terminal that supports the XEP at 9600 board. That combination will produce a really usable system. If you have any suggestions, once again, please leave them in the comments below. CPM was written to run natively on the 8080 and Z80 processors. And for those who like to keep their computing experience real and who have access to an Indus GT floppy drive, it's entirely possible to boot CPM on the Z80 CPU at the heart of the Indus drive. With a simple RAM upgrade to 64K, the drive will cheerfully run CPM, accessed once again via terminal software on your Atari. I showed my Indus being upgraded and the steps required to boot CPM in a previous video. But I didn't show the system running applications or how to get those applications onto disks, which can be read by CPM. The process is relatively trivial if you have an SIO to USB device or similar. Be sure to use hardware flow control with the device. Mine uses the CTS line or it won't work with the Indus. Indus CPM is shipped on several disks, including a RAM charger test, 40 and 80 column terminal emulators and a CPM22 boot disk. To bring the system up, I boot the Indus with MyDOS and have the terminal disk image mounted as drive 2 in aspect. Once MyDOS is running, issue an L command and load the 80 column terminal from D2 by typing e.com at a DOS prompt. When the terminal has loaded, the screen will switch to 80 columns and you'll eventually see a message prompting you to hit return. CPM will boot and you'll have an A prompt. A DIR command will show what's on the logged drive. To do anything useful, you'll have to find application software on the web and move it to disks accessible from within in the CPM. These can be images or real disks. The easiest way to move files around is to create a double density Atari ATR image and use a disk editor to copy CPM files to it. Here I'm using the Atari 800 Mac X disk editor. On the Indus RAM Charger Utilities disk, there is a program called ICDS, which is used to transfer files between Atari and CPM disk formats, among other things. My method is to format a real CPM disk on the Indus using the init command and then boot ICDS from the utilities disk image on D2. Now press C, enter source, destination and file specs and press return. Notice the Atari disk is accessed as 2 rather than B. File transfer is slow because the data path is via the Atari. Also, you will be prompted for text file translation between each file, which means you can't simply leave the process to run while you go and do something else.
Eventually, however, the files will be transferred and you can confirm this with a directory command from ICDS. Quit the utility with Control C. The internet has lots of CPM software free for the taking and once you've created a few disks you're free to play. CPM doesn't know that you have changed disks so the first step is to issue a control C command to log the new disk. Here I'm booting WordStar 3.3. Once the program is running, I change the log disk to B, which is actually the RAM charger CPM boot disk image on aspect, using the L command, and once changed, WordStar displays a directory of the disk. I type D to load a document and select the read.me file. After scrolling a few lines through the file using Control X, I close it without saving changes using Control KQ, and then quit WordStar with Control KX. Notice that having left WordStar, the newly logged drive B is still current. Next, you see me loading MT Pascal, which is interesting because Atari's own ATX Pascal is a port of this compiler. I'll make a future video comparing both compilers in greater detail. For now, I'm simply invoking the compiler by typing MT plus at the console and giving it the test source file prog to compile. You can hear the indus grinding away as the compiler completes its task, but to avoid wear and tear, you can run the compiler from an image on B. A very nice feature of Indus CPM is that it's running on a real Z80 using real file systems on actual disks as well as images. What that means is that you can delve into the operating system itself and come up with meaningful information. Here I start with simple commands such as stat to get information about the drives and devices and dump to display the contents of a submit file on the screen in hex. These would work equally well on Fujinet's run CPM of course.
I'm using the DDT monitor program to show the current state of the registers and so on. Finally, I'm executing a batch file using the submit. Indus comes with a file called cpm.sub, which contains a series of official digital research patches to CPM. I hope this look at Fujinet and Indus CPM has helped anyone who is interested in getting a similar system up and running on their own Atari. Thank you for watching everyone and see you next time in the back room.